So welcome everyone to our meetup. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Carolina Barbeiro, member of the Atal.io and Test Automation Camp teams. Uh, today, as you saw, we have three experienced professionals in the field of software testing. They will be sharing their knowledge and experience with us, and they will be providing an in-depth look into the world of mobile testing. So if you are new to mobile testing or you want to improve your existing skills, uh, stay tuned. Uh, throughout the session, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the chat. Uh, the session is being recorded and then it will be available on YouTube. And at the very end of the session, we will have a little surprise for you. So stay tuned until, until then. Uh, our speakers today are Antoine Krask. Antoine mm -hmm. is the co-founder of Test Automation Camp at Aldo.io and Cerberus Testing. He is passionate about quality engineering, test automation, open source. Um, Joel Oliveira is also one of our speakers. Joel is passionate about software testing and quality assurance. He is the founding member of the Portuguese Software Testing Qualifications Board and is dedicated to improving the recognition of the testing community. Um, lastly, Lina Kulakova is also one of our speakers. She is the founder of Quality Talks. She is a speaker at conferences like Google Dev Fest, Pixels Camp. Uh, she is also a mentor at Portuguese Women in Tech and she is dedicated to coaching organizations to start quality assurance practices from scratch. And I think we covered off uh, all of our speakers. Antoine, feel free to go if you want. Yes, and just in terms of format, so last uh, we did a few meetups with this group uh, in the last months, and the last time we had uh, more interaction, and at the end and it was more interesting. So this is the type of interaction we want to have today with uh, Joel and Lina at the end to share their experience in the field of mobile testing. And after you are free to put a QA uh, during the, the session while, while I will be presenting or uh, when we are talking with Lina and uh, and Joel. So, and to exceptionally, Joel have a constraint at noon. So, I will try to be relatively fast to, to end what I have to share before noon so that Joel can start also sharing and commenting what will be, will be presenting. Okay. So, yes, and the, the scope today of the talk is to, to share about bootstrapping or starting mobile testing. And from the training we are doing, we get usually a lot of questions. And I like to start always by the why we are trying to, uh, not trying, but why we are testing. And I'm, it's always for me a question of, uh, are you enabling people to buy with the mobile, mobile app you will be supporting? So, except in a few cases, if you are working with government or et cetera, where the goal is not to buy, you have also an objective to increase the number of transactions, the user satisfaction, et cetera, that in the end, increase engagement you can bring with the, with the mobile application. And when we see the, I would say, experience of mobile application, we don't have a lot of chance to succeed. So if you see the statistics from the market, so if you have an issue and you start to use a mobile app, you have 80% of the users that are not necessarily yet customers that will just delete the app and probably don't install it again. If you have an issue of space, so if you have provide specific services with a video, picture, and this type of thing, or a huge app, then a lot of people will start to, to remove it. And also the slowliness. So we talk a lot in a Dora space of your industry about reliability, security, etc. But in fact, if you have, when people start to have issues, not only in terms of functionality, but on other type of requirements such as performance, so like it's almost half, we just abandon the mobile application. So what I want to share on the, the mobile testing, it's a bit first, what are the key elements to have in mind when it comes to, to mobile testing and what are the key tooling we can start to use in mobile testing. And then we will go uh, afterwards a bit more about how to set up and how to start the mobile testing uh, approach. So just also as a disclaimer, if I can say, or the perspective, perspective I, I have in the content is a lot about how to test and what are the good practice of architecture. Because I know that uh, Joel and Mina have, have also more content to share on the organizational part, the, the organizational adhesion to the chain. So there is a lot of uh, definition of mobile testing, but if I want quite interesting to link to that, it's because we have a quite, uh, as was I was saying, there is a strong balance today between the functional and the non-functional requirements. So a strong difference that, that comes with mobile testing that we find a bit less with API, for example, is that we have a lot of functionality to validate that is linked with the gesture part that is not that much happening with web or API. So yeah, there is a specificity of usage there. We have a specificity of performance across our device and operating system version. So we, we will see the world of fragmentation. It's uh, one challenge of mobile testing we will be covering and sharing. 
then this leads to another uh, issue is compatibility of the application and performance across a variety of uh, devices. And after you have also the specificity of uh, mobile sensors that are more and more used in uh, mobile experiences, uh, in fact, uh, nowadays. So, and if you, before starting to test an application, we need to know which type of application you are uh, going to test. So here we summarize the four typology of uh, application that you can uh, face in, uh, in enterprise. So you can have multiple if your company are supporting multiple uh, application. Because more and more some companies are, are deploying internal mobile application, for example, for their sales, uh, their, their commercial, etc. So you have a first type, which is quite uh, deployed more and more nowadays. So it's native uh, application. So either Android or iPhone, or if you are in the 1% of Nokia and Microsoft, maybe. So, but it's mainly directly made for the native uh, OS of the, the smartphone. So you have the trade-off there, but basically the historical trade-off where that you are able to use better the native uh, performance, it's more uh, using the native capabilities, etc. The issues that you can have and this start to reduce in differences is that you have to maintain two different code bases for your mobile application. So this is something we don't have, for example, in the world of, of web testing, where you do one web application that is then available on Firefox, Chrome, on Internet Explorer, etc. So this, this trade-off and this problem have started to, to reduce a bit because you have specific framework nowadays that are better at providing an abstraction and be compatible on a different smartphone, etc. But it's also something to, to have in mind when it comes to use case of a high performance, you may need to use a specific OS feature. After you have the trick, it's to don't develop a mobile application, but it's to, to just make a web application responsive and using specific features of the operating system. So you can do uh, responsive capabilities and after you can also use some specific driver capabilities to use uh, native things of the mobile experience. After you have a hybrid uh, application uh, that are in fact written in web language, but that, that are deployable, packageable as a mobile application after one. So it's more like uh, deployment constraints they are managing. And after you have a progressive web, web app, and this is what we are seeing more and more in the ecosystem uh, for specific use case because it's a specific web app extension to, to install on the device. So it's mainly used normally for internal facing uh, application. So these are the first types you can face, but the main type you normally have to deal with in uh, companies is the first one. Now with uh, a lot of uh, languages that are portable across, across platform and you can face the other with less uh, frequency. And one more, normally you heard a lot in the world of uh, testing is Appium. So last time we did a meetup on web testing, we shared around Selenium and the, the suite Selenium web driver, etc. So Appium, I like to say it's like uh, the Selenium web driver for mobile, even if you have some, uh, I would say, compatibility uh, between the two. So the two elements to have in mind on Appium, it's uh, the Appium library. So it's like an app, a library you can incorporate into your code or your testing framework. And this will enable you to, to discuss and to interact with uh, the mobile farm and the mobile device. And it's available in different uh, programming languages or through uh, local interface if you use the Catalan or Test Sigma and this type of test automation tool. And after, you have also a specific tool uh, or product, which is Appium Hub. Appium Hub is uh, in the mindset or in the architecture is similar to Selenium Grid. So it acts as an interface to run the mobile test uh, so, and then behind the scenes, these mobile tests can be one or multiple. They can be on your desktop, on the on-premise device farm, or through uh, an external farm, in fact. And the majority of test automation tools you will find in the ecosystem are relying on at least one or the two of these components to execute a mobile test. So, after your library to interact with the device and have your hub to access to emulated or virtual, uh, emulated or physical device. Appium, similarly to Selenium for information, it's open source maintained by a foundation and it's compatible for the, with the majority of uh, apps there. So and you have here the, the schema here that explains a bit the architecture and the interaction, but globally it's uh, Appium server linked to the Appium hub and then you have the, the jars which are the library you can integrate with your code or that are natively available in test automation tool. So and if we share, I, I I compiled and I, I found for me three main challenges of mobile testing that we have to face as a tester and QA professional. So I will go through these three challenges. So the first one is the fragmentation. 
second one, the user experience, and then the deployment or the, the, the life software development life cycle specific to the mobile and that create challenge for testing. So the first one is fragmentation. So if you see this uh, this graph, is the number of uh, of uh, usage and users of smartphone in uh, billions. So you see that it's always growing, and in projection, it's fairly massive across the world. One main issue, and we talk about fragmentation. Fragmentation is the diversity of mobile devices you can have in the market. So today we have more than 9,000 distinct devices available between the combination of brands, manufacturer, OS, device, etc. So it means that. If you want to test, and it, it has no sense to do that, but if you want to test your application on everything, you have at least 9,000 tests to run, so you see the nightmares that it can be. So it means that we have an issue there uh, to, for the mobile testing, and there is a way to cope with uh, that. And this also impacts the testing infrastructure you need to test, because even if you say, I will not test 9,000, you have a question of how many should I test for the business, for the majority of my user, and let's say if it's still 100, you have the question, how do I get and how do, can I use 100 different type of mobile testing uh, devices for my uh, testing uh, purpose? The second one is the user experience. So mobile testing is very linked to what we are doing uh, with our hands, etc. So you have a lot of gesture, you have rotation, switch, etc. The swipe. So the library are trying and they, are, they do a good job by trying to cope and teasing the implementation of gesture. Nevertheless, it's, it's a bit more complex than point and click or keyboard experiences. So it means that some gestures that the user may do are more complex to do and so, some are harder to automate. So for me, the, the, I would say the, what we should do as a takeaway in the mobile testing is to balance better the effort in manual and automated, automated tests because we have an extra constraints of the user experience we are more linked to the gesture, so you may have a bit more things to do outside of the automation. And when it comes to mobile experiences, we have an increased deal of, uh, I would say, mobility experiences, so it can be hard to simulate real-world uh, experiences, for example, with uh, uh, issue in security, hacking, performance issue, low latency, uh, disruption of network, etc. So there are ways to simulate this uh, situation, but it's more harder to make that in other uh, cases. And the third one is the deployment. So uh, I simplified the process of deploying the mobile app, but when you deploy a web application, you own the domain name normally. You have your internal deployment pipelines that have already this internal complexity. So you also have issues of front-end, back-end interaction, etc. But when it comes to mobile application, we have a man in the middle and we have the mobile device that the people are owning. So in fact, you have two additional challenges. So you have to manage internal lifecycle of development compatible with your back office, web, web front-end, etc. to keep a coherence of your internal system. And this is already hard to have ready to, to ship version available. Then you depend, and I, I should have put stores with an S because you, depo you depend on different stores of different countries to deploy your store. And this is subject to the approval of uh, big players that uh, take 30% of commission of what you are selling <laughs> on the apps and they have the control of that. And after you have the market. So you have a, a, a concrete issue that a lot of players are facing is that if you have, uh, for example, you are on version 15, how can you guarantee that all your users are upgrading to version 15? Because a lot of people don't have automatic update on. Some don't want to do it. Some guys, for example, if you have a worldwide app in India and country like that, they have all, all versions of operating system, they can't upgrade, etc. So you have a lot of issues and complexity to deal with with that. So it means that it's hard to get testing for all these phases. And it's also harder when it comes to testing because it means that you have to guarantee the stability of your product with different versions available in the market. And this is an additional complexity. Uh, whereas for a website, you deploy the latest version, you can have progressive deployment of the beta version, but once the last version is fully deployed, it's under your control. This is not the case for mobile application with these two uh, additional constraints. And then to cover uh, how to start on the mobile testing, so uh, I focused on three essential, essential parts. We can also deep dive on the interest of the audience to on the other part. Is what are the key questions we, when it comes to starting mobile test? We have to answer. What are for me the recommended steps when you have nothing in place for a traditional enterprise to start mobile testing? And then what what is the recommended tooling? But not from the tooling aspect or what are the main tools to know? There is a lot of lists available online, but which essential type of tooling you need to integrate and set up. So for me, the key question I put in terms of uh, how to start uh, mobile testing. So 
for me, it's a lot around doing this, uh, this step of reflection. The first one is why do you want to test to solve which type of problem and which type of testing can help you best. So understand what are the business drivers towards the mobile application, what is more essential to the customer and the user, what are the critical use cases they will be doing, which type of problems they want to solve with the, with the mobile application. This will also derive what are the main technology goals and supporting technology that are most critical to the mobile application you will be, your, your company and your developer will be building. After you need to understand, are you in a project or product mode? Because you have very sometimes different life cycles, so more incremental, more V cycle. And this can impact a lot the type of testing you will need to do in different phases. So you may need, for example, to do much more incremental tests or you will have to do, for example, mandatory, a lot of security and performance tests before a big go live. So you have to understand the life cycle and with the life cycle I was sharing, when it will go to the store, when it will go to the market, because it will mean that some type of testing will be needed at a certain point. And then from there, you can start without knowing yet the type of testing. You will have to link the two together, but it's what will be most uh, suitable to manual testing and what would be most candidates to automation based on the first question. And then when you are, you are clear on that, you can start to say, based on what the business want to do, the life cycle and the stage of my project, which type of testing can bring more value. So my list is quite exhaustive. I may be missing a few, but there's a lot of tests you can do when it comes to mobile. Normally, you will not have the resource to do everything. So we will see after how to prioritize, but you have really an effort of prioritization and the priority should not be of what is easier to do. It's one criteria. The first criteria are, are what are on the left is. What is most important for your business? Because it's better to do a few tests that bring a lot of value than a lot of tests that don't, not a lot of people care about. And after, once you are clear on which type of test I want to do for the business and the context, you can switch to which technology and tooling I will use and devices. So one question you will have to answer is, should I use emulator or physical devices? So it will, link, it will be linked to the first part, but also your budget that you have available. And then you have to cast beyond that, will I use local, local device, on-premise, cloud services? So there is, it's not necessarily one answer. You can choose to use cloud services for certain type of testing, on-premise for other. So it really depends on the type of testing you will do. And then, address the fragmentation issue to say which type of platform, which type of operating system. Okay. So and this is for me the key steps to, to think about. So for me, the recommended steps uh, to start mobile testing, because as you saw, there is a lot of variables and possible uh, path. So depending on which type of testing you choose, for me, the advice I have is to make things work manually. So don't try to automate if you don't have something working manually or semi-manually, because else we'll just automate something working wrongly or not properly. After automate, what should be automated and that value, but only on the minimal valuable scope to iterate and demonstrate and see if there is value. And then increase the test scopes on what brings value to the business and your project team. And the value is not necessarily on the automation. You can have automated a few non-regression tests, it's fine. And that gives you more time to do, uh, for example, uh, exploratory tests, for example. But this depends on your context. So, and based on what I share, for me, if you have nothing in place and you have you are a traditional uh, business company deploying a mobile application for your user to buy something normally or to support their use case, normally the main things you have to validate in the priority with the automation, because you still have for me uh, security, etc. to do. But the recommended steps, if you have nothing in place, is to really focus on what are the business driver. You are normally in a project mode because you will launch at a particular date the product. You are not yet shipping a lot of version and you will start manually to do user experience testing and will, your main focus will be to validate the features for the user and normally inside the user experience you will cover a bit the usability and accessibility but not that formally. And at that stage, normally you, you don't have any specific device external variable so my recommendation is by use the device people have in your company and for the automated test you will do after you, you, you can do through emulator and cloud to start quite quickly and with low cost of uh, usage and deployment. And for me, once you have that working, you can start to automate what's, what makes sense because you have reused your emulator and cloud capabilities and you can focus on the features of your, uh, what is, what bring, brings more value to your, to your company when you are shipping the, the, deployment, the project. And after you can address the other type of testing based on the business and product roadmap uh, and add if needed, uh, buy more physical devices, add on-premise device and that type of stuff. 
And now I wanted to cover a bit what you want to, to use as a tooling for mobile testing. So I put on the left what should be and how should look like a good CI-CD mobile deployment pipeline when it's mature. So when it's mature, normally you will have a test requirement tool, a test referential tool. You will have a test automation platform or different tooling for web, mobile and API, but you will have a test automation tooling. It will be integrated with your CI-CD pipeline, monitoring observability features, and then you will have two essential components. So normally it's an internal device farm because you, where you will have the minimal set of mobile you want to test because it will be faster, cheaper, etc. to have the result. And then normally you will have an external SaaS farm to have access to a wide variety of, of browsers and execute on demand uh, on a, a lot of different uh, devices. But to start, if you, if you want to you will start and you try to do what is on the left, you have six months or more of project and you are going nowhere normally, it's too hard, too complex. And the reality is that it will cost a lot for not doing that much. So my recommendation is to start much more light, knowing where you are going after on the target. But the minimal steps is to have, we recommend strongly to have a test requirement and test referential piece. So somewhere, it's not necessarily a full feature tool, but you need to have that. It can be Jira XP, it can be other type of tool to handle the test requirement part. After you need a tooling for test automation platform. So here in test automation camp, we make some training on Catalan, but you have a lot in the market. It can be a robot framework if you like that one. But there are multiple solutions available. What you need to make sure is that it's available to connect with external SaaS farm. Because if you try, you have to implement this yourself, it will, it will be a lot of time and your business will be waiting for value to appear. So recommendation is to have leverage things that are connected. And I put some examples here of a solution. If you want to know more, you just type the keyword here, uh, mobile testing farm SaaS, and you will have a lot of players in the market. So just for you to have in mind is that in the test automation platform, you have tooling specialized for mobile, or you have others that are addressing web, mobile, and API desktop in an all-in-one solution. And after, you have also tooling that is more, I would say, in a low-code mode, mode or scripted oriented, like Cypress and this type of tooling. So it depends on what you are looking and your, your context. And after, in external SaaS farm, Again, you have also the same type of uh, things. You have other offers that are only providing devices. For example, browser stacks, they provide, they provide access to 3,000 different types of devices. And you have others that provide the devices plus the capability to execute your test directly. So they can be also useful to start with because they have everything integrated together, but they can be harder to integrate with your test automation um, at the end. And this is in fact the minimal setup you need to have when you start to automate the first use case of long regression for, uh, for your company. And I left very few moments, so I try to accelerate during it, so I know you have to left at noon, but uh, I put the, I, I put this slide to introduce the sharing, but you are free and I put some content we can share on my side also. Feel free, Joel. Yeah, sorry guys, I, I really, I'm looking to the clock. I only have yeah, yeah. two minutes. Um, so uh, later on, I will also ask you, Antoine. I will share some of my notes. Okay, so uh, you can share with the uh, with uh, the audience. But just to to stress some some of the points that you referred. So the mobile requires a different cycle. So we are talking mostly about about uh, agile development. So that means that we will have frequent release, and that means also lots and lots of regression. So we need to. Um, to, to to be able to support that from our strategy um of course manual will come first always uh, but we need to have automation uh to to make sure that we are not spending time over and over with the with the basic regression and yes we can also have api testing uh, but that's not what the user will see right so api testing it's easy to, to do it's faster uh, yeah. cheaper whatever but uh, in the end, the user will not care about the API, right? So if the API is working and the app is just slow, it, it will it will um, just drop it. Just before leaving, uh, one more thing about the user. So basically, you touch all the points, the, the different device, you know, this huge amount, the, the different types of tests, functional and non-functional. But just to, to, to reinforce something regarding the users, okay? So the the users of the mobile apps they have very high expectations and they are not always trained or they are not always knowledgeable about and the, the app or about what they should expect okay even if they expect a lot uh, and they have what they call a small power mm -hmm. so it's not just the use of the app but they can also um, rate the app and 
give you know uh, these one stars in the stores and that can really bring down an app so the app can disappear from the market just because the users are giving one star and i have a very good example of one user that was rating one star because the app was not working for a different brand so it was the app was from ah. brand a and he was trying to use it with brand b and of course it was not working and just because of that he was giving one star and a, a very bad review okay so just think a little bit on that i'm sorry for rushing i really need to to jump into the next one but uh, i will i will make sure that i've shared my notes with all of you okay yeah thanks a lot joel for being thank present you. for sharing yeah thank you thanks for the invite thank you guys yeah yeah, right. yeah and feel free if you have question now we can share them after but it can be live uh, there yeah so and uh, Lina, you want to do you want to either comment what we shared if you have any feedback or also experience on your side of mobile testing i know that you you put a lot of QA practice from scratch in place when it's not only mobile so i assume you have something to share I had also mobile experiences and actually my first projects were all mobile. Oh, okay. uh, pro <laughs> yeah, probably Portuguese people know the app MUA and that was my second oh, yeah. project. My okay. first project was for Vodafone and also the mobile uh, app for them. So uh, my first experiences were all around mobile and I do remember um, some uh, how fascinating it was. I think that uh, you guys, you and Joel, you mentioned a lot of great, great tips and I do agree with all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, I will share a little bit of some practical tips that I found throughout my career. I tried to remove the ones that you already mentioned, but probably I will um, say something that was mentioned already today. Mm -hmm. So one first lesson that I had uh, is that mobile testing should be mobile. And it might sound funny, but that's true. I uh, it happened to me to to start my uh, mobile testing, um, seated in my at my desk usually, and uh, you know sitting there for a couple of hours clicking yeah. things. But the user experience actually tells us that that, that is the wrong usage. Wow. Even yeah. if I'm at <laughs> even if I'm at home, uh, sit still sitting or laying down and and using my app, usually I won't sit like that. Just <laughs> testing, I'll probably be like that or like that. Or so mobile testing should be mobile and feel uh, free to just, I don't know, walk around the office, lay down, because that's what your actual user will be, uh, be doing. Yeah. So try to, to uh, educate your teams and guarantee that they have this part uh, embedded in their test plans. Uh, then select carefully your platforms. Um, we all know that there are different platforms nowadays. We are, well, Windows phones are not that popular anymore, nor Blackberries, but we still have different platforms, different screens, different sizes. And it's really important for us to be selective because we can't buy all the devices all over the world. And even if I'm using like a uh, farm, still we cannot use every single device. So be picky about that. For example, the Application Developers Alliance app uh, um, has a good uh, share, uh, sharing about the platforms that are being used. So mm. you can, for example, research what are the most um, common phones out there and usually that's statistics you can find and you can uh, then select the, the, the platforms that you'll be using. Mm -hmm. um, don't forget the iPads because it's not and the, the tablets because that is also part of mobile testing, not yeah. only phones. So guarantee that you have different screen sizes and uh, you have different uh, platforms, iOS and Android, but select that carefully and that you have uh, tons of information on the internet to help mm. you with that. Mm -hmm. um, another one is keep it user centric and that is not only specifically for, for, my, for mobile, but I do find that really important because um, we can be developing uh, an app for like, I don't know, that kids will be using and uh, parents will just turn on some something for them and they'll be using mainly that. It can be a game that probably mainly kids will be using. Or it right. can be uh, an app that is more towards, I don't know, um, adults or youngsters. And that is important and crucial for us to keep in mind while planning our tests and while uh, defining the criteria that we'll be checking. Um, another one is uh, embrace different perspectives because 
sometimes again when we are at work we might be bored or we might be excited but usually there are some situations in life when a user a real life user will be annoyed angry or something like that yeah. um imagine that you are using a uber app right and don't want, i should have not mentioned any uh, um, brands but uh, they are not sponsoring us but anyways imagine that you are using an app to call a cab and it, you will be a completely in a different mood if you are going to a date, if you are running late for an important meeting, or if you are going to the airport, or if you are just going to the city center to drink a coffee. Yeah. You will be in different moods and that can impact a lot on your mobile usage. So while testing, keep in mind that you should have, you should try at least to embrace different perspectives. Yeah. Um, Another one is do not uh, disregard interruption and uh, conformance testing. And what do I mean by that? Usually we test mobile also in uh, specific devices that the company buys or in the farms on simulators. And that means that you won't have probably your alarm ringing. You probably won't have anyone calling you to that device. Don't forget that that usually uh, is also a great source of bugs. So mm -hmm. if you're testing your mobile application, set an alarm, call to that device, try different things, mm -hmm. because that might be also important and help you find uh, different bugs. Mm -hmm. Another one is, of course, on e mobile gestures are important. So we usually tend to click on things, but there are mobiles that uh, have like uh, spe specific interactions with side buttons on a phone or on a tablet uh, where we can just do the, some gestures where we can swipe, swipe down, swipe left. That is important. Also, don't forget about that. It's not only about clicking like it would be in a web. It's also about the gestures in mobile. Um, another one is guarantee that your app is linked to device settings because you have, for example, a setting to uh, yeah. different brightness and all the, those things, right? So uh, mm -hmm. dark mode, different things. So play around with it. That might be also um, a good thing to do because your app should be also adapted mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. Um, one great example that I have is, I don't know if you know, but probably uh, you do some of the applications nowadays. They allow us to send a photo only with a, a Exactly, exactly. One important test for that would be to try to take a screenshot and guarantee that it's not allowed. And mm -hmm. in the beginning, for example, apps like Instagram and WhatsApp would allow us to do screenshots. Now they do not anymore. So that mm -hmm. is important. So play around with your phone as well, because some um, features of the phone uh, might impact also the usage of your app. Mm. Of course, uh, my tip number eight would be enrich your test with simulators, and that was already said, but I, I didn't want to remove this one because this is really important. You cannot have a farm of tons of different uh, uh, devices, so guarantee and use uh, different simulators. It's uh, really accessible to, to different companies. It's not that expensive, at least it depends on what you are using, but um, enrich your test with different simulators because with that you can guarantee better coverage. Uh, add a pinch of statistics because that is also important. For example, um, I have um, checked uh, different uh, platforms and different websites. I have here a consumer barometer, mobile statistics, net uh, market share, things like that. You can learn a lot about your persona, about your users, about devices, what is important, what are the statistics of each device or each persona, so that you can really think through your mobile testing. And of course, last but not least, automate once mature. I do agree with what was discussed today. Uh, we cannot obviously um, automate right from the beginning, especially when it comes to mobile, because we have a lot of different risks and there will be probably a lot of changes. So it might be an overkill to keep all the tests up to date. But once it's mature, do automate. I know it's not that common, uh, the, the mobile automation, but it's really important. It's really important. Having different platforms, and especially when it's mobile testing, you have different platforms, different side screens, different settings. It's a lot to do manually. So do guarantee that you automate your application testing once you have a mature app. Mm. And that's it. Well, thanks a lot, Fina. A lot of great uh, tips. I think we should make some 
some slides bring all your tips to other like actually so that's it <laughs> i can you. share it i have only the titles but okay. uh, i think at the, if anyone would uh, like to to have them i can mm -hmm. share Okay, no, no, I'm great on the points on the user-centric uh, focus and the real-world usage of the mobile app. Like you say, I think we are too often uh, sitting in our desk and in fact, we should really do what the user is doing with different parameters. And now we have one point I did not mention explicitly, explicitly sorry, the, yeah, the privacy aspect. Well, yeah. there's like a lot of improvement, uh, not improvement, but of change of user behavior there. So and it complicates a lot around the experience. But, yeah. That's a great tip as well, yeah. I do remember, for example, I was using some apps, for example, while I was in the uh, underground, right, with a lot of people around me, and uh, you, I, there was a specific gesture that I needed to do, but that I could not because it was so crowded. So that is important, like walk around and do different things. Don't just test sitting at your desk. Yeah. <laughs> Now, right now we have a few more minutes for questions. If there is any in the audience, uh, feel free to. You you, are, you can also put your camera if you want, and it would be great. <laughs> you can unmute or put just question in the chat if you would prefer, and we can we can answer with Lino. We'll be happy to do it. Actually, I, I wanted to, to check with you for Appium because last time I used it for automation, it was around four years ago. Ah. And uh, I'm quite curious about uh, how easy it is to set up right now. Yeah, but, but the, probably it had a lot of improvements. But it had a lot of improvement with uh, yeah, the simplicity of setup and uh, launcher. So it's it's quite easy if you uh, easy. It's relative if you use one of the solution uh, here, uh, yeah. the, or competitors because they have mm -hmm. the same version and they free up for from all the setup. So the main complexity you have to deal with is uh, connecting, uploading your app to the remote uh, device. In fact, so this is yeah. the complexity. Because after all the connectivity between your local testing tool or cloud testing tool to the solution is quite easy. You, you define the capabilities and the capabilities, in fact, it's uh, the configuration of your device. It's a, uh, is it an iOS and Android? What is the version? What is uh, the, the, the operating system version, etc. And then this will instantiate your remote device with the correct configuration, etc. And it will upload your app there. So, and the main complexity for me is this, because if you are in a CI-CD setup, it means that you need to build your APK, for example, or IP couple package, do have a trick to do the upload of your application into the remote farm, and then launch your test suite. So this is a bit more uh, hard. But in fact, this tool simplifies that uh, provisioning of uh, environment, and they, now they also provide physical device as a service. So it's quite useful because before we had a lot of issues of uh, network latencies and the execution time was like two or three times slower than a physical device. So if you execute one test, it's not or uh, 10 tests, it's not a big problem. But when your test suite starts to be of 50, 100 tests or more, you can wait hours before to get the results and it, it becomes a problem because people lack uh, value from the campaign. So and they, they made a lot of progress to solve that. And they, they are bundling a lot of capabilities. For example, they provide uh, uh, automated screenshot on errors, video recording, uh, automated replay, this type of stuff. So in fact, you can win a lot of time by using the services. Because uh, I, I also tried personally to run a reset up local with Appium Hub, etc. But you need to understand a bit about the mobile configuration, device, etc. So it's not that straightforward um, if you are not inside this hardware piece, in fact. And I'm not that much in. So. Awesome, thank you. And you have a question there, Antoine, for you. Uh, Philip Sosa has a question. He says in uh, the chat, uh, Hey Antoine, from your experience on e commerce, how is the percentage of customers buy on mobile? Yeah, but it starts to be the majority. In fact, at Product, we have a, a real time monitoring dashboard. So we see how many people are on the site, on the, on the main pages, on the checkout, on the payment page, and that are actually buying and placing orders. And we have that after per device, or not per device, but on the website, on the mobile site, and on the native application. And in fact, the two things which we saw that are changing, and it's happening for the majority of e-commerce experiences. Today, we have more than 70% of uh, transactions on the mobile application. So it's a, it's a lot. So the company is quite making one, one billion of online sales a year, for example, at La Rodouche, and so 700 million on the mobile app. So it's quite, it's a lot. And, and I saw an increase of 20% in two years. So it was a very drastic change of uh, web started to inverse with native mobile application. 
And the second factor, what is important for me for organization to consider mobile and to tailor the experience to what people will do on mobile. So it's not necessarily the website in an app. For me, it should be very natively soft for mobile use case and needs. But uh, you have normally an increase of the, about, the retention and the volume of buying uh, per customer for people using the app uh, there. So normally people buy in uh, average 10 to 20% more from a company when they are using the mobile app. Uh, and it's due to multiple factors. It's because you have your mobile app is personal. You already have the login with Face ID, etc. So you have some barriers of usage that are uh, removed. And another important factor is that on the mobile application, it's easier if you do it well with marketing to animate the customers and the users because you can send push notification. And when you send push notification, you are relying much less on acquiring traffic from Google ads uh, and all the ads industry, in fact. And I don't know yours, but if you receive sometimes a push on your mobile, you just click and you are on the mobile app ready to buy or do something. And the other tactic is to send email, pull, and this type of things, but normally we are already saturated by that. So there is also this sort of advantage for e-commerce performance. Yeah. So yeah, so well, as Redout is 70%, but for me, the majority of companies able to do a successful mobile app, normally the mobile app gradually take over the web experience on the shopping value. Okay, but well, if you have no more questions, we have just one offer to share with you today on Test Automation Camp. If you are interested, you can go to the site. We have been uh, updating the course and we updated the prices. So let me go. So we have discount on the price also for the mobile test. So if you want to access the, the course, you can just do it with the code, which is here. Carolina will put it in the chat and the link. And we have also an offer on the full bundle for people who participated in the meetup. So you are free to go and acquire if you're interested. It's based on partially what we what we share today. So thanks a lot for uh, having come today. So if you want, uh, if you have ideas or input for next topic, feel free. Else we will come back with uh, new content soon. And special thanks to so Joël Affet uh, left, but thanks to him. And also special thanks to Lina to have come here and share our experience. Great. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Stay well and have a good lunch. I think we have quite all Portuguese there. So yeah. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Stay well.